Good afternoon, all. It is my pleasure to welcome to this IKU pre-seminar remote training on Corsia Central Register, the CCR for the African region. My name is Jane Hoopy, and I am the director in charge of the environmental program of IKEA. I will be providing you with an overview of this seminar. Next slide, please. So we are all uh, fully aware of uh, the difficulties that were imposed by this COVID-19 crisis. And um, we, we were all trying to now face a new way of doing things as we, uh, most of us had to cancel meetings, we could not travel anymore, etc. So uh, you all uh, are fully aware that we initially have um, a targeted five face-to-face uh, -face sem seminars in the beginning of the year. Um, and we had to postpone those 2020 uh, Corsair Regional Seminars uh, for a, a later day this year. Um, we, this webinar, in fact, it's not a replacement of this 2020 training that we we'll still want to, to have with you face-to-face, uh, -face, but uh, for the time being, we still don't have the, the next dates for the regional seminars. And we are fully aware that, uh, you know, you're in a very important time in your states in uh, addressing and uh, being prepared to compile, compile all the, the data that you'll be receiving from your operators. And um, for that, we have prepared um, this initial seminar. Uh, it's a three-hour training session on the Corsa Central Registry. And um, we have already uh, undertaken two of those uh, seminars in two different regions in the um, in the previous days and we will still have two more to go so we intend to provide the support and cover all the regions that we have uh, planned in the beginning um, this time in a slightly different way but uh, we uh, nevertheless we thought that it was very important to keep uh, that momentum to be able to provide that training and assistance to our states uh, on Corsium. And thank you again very much for participating. I know it's not easy for any of us during these times, but I think it's again very important. And with all the dedication that we, we had from you so far, we also are here to, to provide you the support. Next slide. So, um, in, if you look at the documentation you have, if you look at the SARPs, you see that there are some specific things that uh, had to, to happen in 2019. There are other tasks that need to happen in 2020. Um, you, you know that um, you have been working since uh, 2018, which are operators preparing their emissions plans. And um, from 1st January 2019, all airplane operators conducting international flights were required to start monitoring their international flights uh, CO2 emissions. Um, this, the operators also had to start um, compiling uh, 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 that uh, information. And they had to um, provide that emissions report to a third party verification. In fact, the deadline uh, to uh, do all of that and then uh, submit their 2019, uh, 2019 reports to you, to the states, uh, was, uh, is going to be at 31st uh, May 2020. Um, when, with the holding of that information, you then, uh, you're going to, um, Take all that information, aggregate the 2019 CO2 emissions data, uh, and um, uh, you're going to submit that information, the CO2 emission data uh, per state pair, through uh, the Corsa Central Register, the CCR. That's all going to be 
uh, the basis, you will be repeating that exercise for the 2020 emissions and all of that becomes uh, after uh, the basis for calculating the course and baseline, which is an average from 2019 and 2020. So, um, what is important is that we have then created this platform, the CCR, the Central Register, which is this um, interface between you and ICAO for the submission of that uh, data. So, um, our intention with this uh, 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 non-face-to-face uh, seminar, this webinar, is to provide basic information to you, uh, the course of focal points, on how to use main functionalities of the CCR. We really want you today to get familiarized with the CCR, know those functionalities, so when you, when you receive uh, the tool, you, you can start using it, even though we, we did not yet have our face-to-face training uh, uh, at that point. I, I do hope that we will have the face-to-face -face training um, very soon, but we still don't have the date. So it's very, very important that you feel at least familiarized with the CCR and that you can start, uh, you know, working with it, uh, uh, training uh, to incl include the data in it, etc. So today, we are going to, to give you uh, uh, an introduction to the, to the tool itself, a general familiarization of this web interface, and then specifically how you can upload the CO2 emissions into the CCR and how you submit that CO2 emissions into uh, the CCR to provide to IK. Okay, so today, we, we are planning having a two segment um, a meeting here, uh, each one 90 minutes. We are giving you a little break in the middle just to stretch the legs. And the first part we'll be covering then this welcoming that I'm doing right now. Then we will introduce the CCR. We will then have question and answers. Then we'll have a demo of the CCR, a little time to you to to play, to, to, to uh, familiarize, familiarize yourself with the, the tool. And then we have another question and answers. We have the break, then we will have another demo on how to report the CO2 emissions. We'll do an exercise uh, uh, with you so that you are really, really, really um, uh, certain that you, you got all the main functionalities. Then you have another question and answers. Then you have a demonstration on the service request. And then we'll have a, a final question and answers and the closing. Um, you, uh, during that time uh, for the question and answers, we, uh, um, we will have uh, a means for you to, to use uh, uh, this chatting channel. I'll, I'll, I'll explain a little bit more on that. But you have to be reassured that if you have a doubt during this time, you should just uh, ask your question. You know, our staff is here to uh, provide you with all the information. There is no simple or complex or um, not sure is this a question. Ask it. Okay, we'll be pleased to to uh, address your question. So each participant has been giving access. Um, to his or her state's uh, account, and that's a training version for the CCR that mimics, you know, the, the tool that you're going to receive uh, in the state. Next. So, I was talking to you about the, the way you would be uh, asking the questions. We, we could have this uh, by audio, but when you have too many participants in one a single uh, place, that can get a little bit complicated. Uh, so the best is uh, to avoid any issues with the audio, that all participants will be muted during the presentations, but you can't at any point in time use that chat function. So what's this chat function? Nothing different than this little, um, uh, symbol that you have is this speech bubble. 
symbol, the icon that you, you have on the top right of your uh, screen. If you click and you can click it now, you will see that it creates a space. At the bottom, you can just type, you know, just go to the bottom, click, and then you can type your question there. You have to, to ask your question and send it to everyone, not only to the presenter. It would be very strange for the other participants if they are participating and suddenly the, the presenter is addressing a question that they have not seen in writing. So people will be seeing the, the questions and they'll say, oh, I'm so happy if someone asked that question. I also had this one. So uh, it's important that we feel comfortable asking those questions. It's important that we, um, we see how that bubble works. And I can see that there's a lot of people already using uh, the, the bubble to say hello, <laughs> which is great. So um, we'll be addressing your question during the, the presentation or after the presentation. Don't, don't think we are not seeing the question. It's just that maybe your question is going to be addressed in the next slide. So the presenter will continue to go on with the presentation and then we'll be um, addressing the presentation. Uh, next slide. So you have received a lot of material now on course here. We are really doing our best to inform you all in the best of our abilities so that you have all the tools you need to do a tremendous job uh, as a focal point on course in your state. And very recently we received by email a new set uh, uh, of leaflets that are specifically on um, the central registry. That helps you even more with your tasks because it addresses specific steps that you want to take using the CCR, specific functionalities that you want to know a little bit more. So you have that all those uh, leaflets with you. Um, and uh, at that point, I think what the best thing to do is that we get prepared to start our, our uh, presentations um, on today on the CCR. I just really want to reiterate how pleased I am that you could join us today. We all understand the difficult times we are all in and um, we are here to help you at uh, any time in the implementation of uh, Corsia. You have to, to feel that you're being supported by the ITA Secretariat. And on that note, I wish you a very successful webinar and please keep safe. Thank you. And so good afternoon to everybody. My name is uh, Stelios Pesmazoglu. I'm a program officer at the Environment Branch of the ICAO Secretariat. And in this first part of uh, our online uh, training, I will walk you through some basic information on the Corsia Central Registry. I will give you an introduction uh, to the CCR, uh, starting from uh, where it, um, it began. And also, I'm going to give you later on a demonstration of some of its main functionalities. But before I, I do that, before I start with my presentation, what I would like to do is I would like to make sure that um, all of you have received an email message from Turanto, which gave you access to the CCR. In that email message, you must have received your username to the uh, training version of the CCR. And also in that email message, there was a link that if you click on it, you will get on the CCR and you will be able to set up your password. I hope that you have all received this email message. In case it did not arrive in your inbox, please also check in your spam folder if you have not received it already. And if it is not in your inbox, if it is not in um, your spam folder, then please uh, send us um, a message We're using uh, the chat function and we will um, uh, make sure that you uh, get access to the CCR. Um, if you have received this email message and um, you know the link, when you clicked on the link uh, to set up your password, it uh, gave you an error message saying that um, uh, this link has expired. Uh, don't worry about it you can still set up a password and you can do that uh, by going into the CCR 
training website. And for now, this is what you can see on your screen. It's uh, corsia.turanto.com. Uh, this is uh, what you can uh, type in into your web browser. Please note there is no www before Corsia. It's only corsia.turanto.com. And if the link has expired, then what you can do is you can you can click on the forgot password at the bottom be below the sign in button. And if you do that, then it will you will get this screen where you can enter your email, the email that you have used to register for this online training or the username that was in the email message from Toronto. And then there will be another follow up email message with a link again to set up your password. This is, a, this is the process of how you can set up your password. I hope that you don't have any problems doing that. But again, as I mentioned, if you have problems, please let us know and we'll try to help you. So let me uh, start with my presentation and um, we, can, we will go back into the CCR later to give you a demonstration, a live demonstration of its main functions. So, Let's start from uh, the mandate for the development of the CCR. The first time that the notion of a central registry appeared in the context of Corsia was with the Assembly Resolution A39.3. In paragraph 20G, the Assembly requested the Council to establish a central registry and to have it operational no later than 1st of January 2021. As you all know, Following the agreement on Corsia, the ICAO Council undertook work on the Annex 16, Volume 4. And in the context of the Annex 16, Volume 4, the Corsia Central Registry was identified as one of the five implementation elements of Corsia. More recently, the Assembly Resolution A4019 uh, has two specific references on the Corsia Central Registry. It's in the same paragraph 19, but two different subparagraphs, B and D. And the first one relates to the development and update of IKEO Corsia documents, which are referenced in Annex 16, Volume 4, and are related to uh, Corsia Central Registry. And also a request from the Assembly to the Council to establish the Corsia Central Registry under the auspices of IKEO and uh, to, uh, to enable the reporting of relevant information from member states by early 2020. And this is where we are now. We are already in early 2020, and uh, we already have developed the CCR, and we will, we, you have been given access to a training version of it. And um, in the next four to five weeks, uh, you should also be given access to the version one of uh, the CCR. But before we start talking specifically about the CCR, um, I would like to remind you of uh, the general information flow between the different stakeholders. And uh, most of you that participated in, um, in our uh, events, in our regional events last year, I hope you remember that we have provided two different leaflets that were specific for the CCR. It was the number six that you are, you see reference on this slide. And there was another one, number seven. And the information that I'm gonna show you now is part of the leaflet number six. The information flow between uh, the three stakeholders, um, aeroplane operators, the states, which are oftentimes uh, represented by the Civil Aviation Authority and um, ICAO involves a number of different actions, and they are all initiated by the airplane operators that they monitor CO2 emissions and provide information to their national authorities. The next step is for the states to aggregate this information and report to ICAO. Once ICAO receives this information, then aggregates even further and makes it available on the public website. In addition, ICAO also uses the CO2 information to estimate what is called the sector's growth factor, uh, which is specific for Corsia and for every single year of Corsia, starting with the, the year 2021. 
So the sector's growth factor has been published on the website, it's been made available to the states, and the states use this information to calculate the offsetting requirements for individual um, aeroplane operators. The aeroplane operators, they use this information to buy uh, eligible emission units uh, from the carbon market and eventually cancel them to uh, make sure they fulfill their requirements under uh, Corsia. Once they have done this, they have they compile all the information, they submit to the state, the state once again aggregates information on the cancelled emission units and reports to ICAO, and ICAO aggregates even further and makes information available on the public website. There is a lot more detail behind all of this process. There is, of course, as you all know, the verification of uh, the various reports. I haven't shown this on this slide because it goes beyond what I would like to highlight. This is the general information flow and what the CCR tries to do is tries to facilitate the reporting from states to ICAO and also facilitate the um, making available, making information available on the ICAO website as well. The Corsia Central Registry does not address how a state collects information from its aeroplane operators. This is left up to the states to decide how to do it. Um, it is not covered by the Corsia Central Registry and we are not going to discuss in this, um, in this presentation, in this uh, training session. However, if any of you uh, would like um, you know, some assistance from the ICAO Secretariat, please send us um, an email message and we'll try to uh, assist you any which way we can. So in terms of reporting by states, this, what you see on your screen, it's um, the first um, eight years of Corsia. The first two years, 2019 and 20, they formed the baseline as uh, Jane mentioned in her opening presentation. And uh, during this time, 2019 and 20, states uh, were required by Annex 16, Volume 4 to provide information on the, uh, their airplane operators and verification bodies that um, are accredited in them. For 2019, of course, there was no uh, CCR, there was no Corsia Central Registry. So uh, what the Secretariat did was to develop an online spreadsheet, which was used by uh, a lot of states to provide information on both airplane operators and verification bodies. This online spreadsheet is still alive. You can still use it for uh, maybe another three or four weeks until the CCR comes live, at which point uh, the online spreadsheet use will be terminated. So for now, uh, we, uh, we have received information uh, from states on the airplane operators and verification bodies. Uh, later this year, by 30th of November, we'll receive more information uh, from all of you, again, now using the CCR on airplane operators and verification bodies. And this year is the first time that states are required to provide information on CO2 emissions. And of course, we are talking about emissions for the year 2019. In relation to Corsia eligible fuels, uh, just to highlight this, um, there is no uh, hard requirement for states to provide information on uh, Corsia on uh, Corsia eligible fuels claimed for the baseline years for 2019 and 20. However, if states would like to do this, if they have information from their operators, then they are welcome uh, to provide this information. But keep in mind that this information is only for information purposes only. This, this data is not being used, is not being taken into account for the calculation of the baseline emissions, anything like that. So going back into the um, uh, CO2 emissions, uh, you will see that uh, there is different coloring in, um, on this uh, particular table. And this uh, tries to reflect the timing when information comes for a specific, uh, uh, for a specific uh, phase of Corsia. So as I mentioned before, we have the baseline 2019 and 20, we have the pilot phase 21 to 23, the first phase 24 to 26, and of course, Corsia, as you know, continues until 2035. 
So the gray shading in uh, this table represents the pilot phase and when information is supposed to be provided for the specific years um, of the pilot phase. Uh, the uh, blue color, uh, it is again reflects the first phase. The dark blue color represents uh, the, the, um, uh, the second phase of uh, the scheme. So you will see information coming for specific years is not, doesn't come at the same time. So looking at uh, one example for 2021, information on aeroplane operators and verification bodies for 2021 will be submitted this year already in 2020 by 30th of November. However, CO2 emissions and <clears throat> And information on course eligible fuels will be provided in 2022. And if we are talking about cancelled emission units, the first time we will see this information will be in 2025, and this will address the um, all three years of the pilot phase of um, Corsia. So again, um, just putting this um, on the screen uh, for you to be aware that um, the information will come at different points in time. And, and, and again, it varies depending on, um, you know, the different reporting requirements as described in Annex 16, Volume 4. One other thing to keep in mind, and again, this is again specific for the Corsia eligible fuels, there is a flexibility for states to report this information either annually, so every year, or once at the end of the, its three-year cycle. Again, this is left up to the states to decide how they want to do reporting on uh, this particular aspect. Now, I mentioned earlier that the ICAO Secretariat will make available a number of documents on uh, the ICAO website. These are referenced in Annex 16, Volume 4. And we have actually already started making some of these documents available on our website, starting with uh, information on uh, attributions of airplane operators and verification bodies. So what you see on the screen is um, a brief description of uh, three uh, documents that um, we, we are going to make available. One of them, as I mentioned, is already available as the first one. Is a list of aeroplane operators and the states to which they are attributed. We have already produced three editions of the, this particular document. The latest one was published in December 2019. And this document is updated regularly, taking into account new information provided by states using the online spreadsheet. The next edition of, um, of this particular document will be made available uh, sometime this month, uh, once we have consolidated the information uh, from the online uh, spreadsheet. The next uh, two documents will be published, uh, uh, the first one, 31st of October 2021, and this is the total 2020 CO2 emissions. And this particular document will be used to determine the first year in which a new entrant has offsetting uh, requirements in accordance with Annex 16, Volume 4. And uh, the last document on this slide is what is referred to as the Corsia Annual Sectors Growth Factor. Uh, the first edition of this document will be made available by 31st October 2022 and will contain information on the sector's growth factor for the year 2021, for the previous year. The next document that uh, we have already started making available is uh, what is referred to as uh, Corsia information and data for transparency. We have already produced five editions of uh, this document. Uh, the latest one was published in early March 2020, but for now this document contains only information on verification bodies. So this is uh, the first bullet that you see in blue on your screen is the list of verification bodies accredited in its state. And um, in this document, we have been more, we have made it available more uh, regularly because um, as you are, are aware, the verification process is ongoing. So as soon as we receive information, we try to make it um, available as soon as possible. Uh, taking into account the time is taken for uh, its approval by the ICAO Council, of course. 
and um, we make it available to everybody so airplane operators they know the names of the verification bodies that they have achieved accreditation information on co2 emissions on uh, information on course eligible fuels and offsetting requirements and uh, cancelled emission units this of course we don't have it right now but uh, starting from next year we will start populating this information into this particular document and we will keep it updated so over time you can i'm sure you can appreciate that this document will become really voluminous with a lot of information in it uh, and will be extremely helpful i think for all of you to see the progress made in uh, the context of um, uh, Corsia. I mentioned the two leaflets when I started my presentation. This is what we produced last year. This is uh, the number six and number seven, that they provide some very general information on the CCR and also describe in a bit more detail the information that we will make publicly available on the IKO website. Uh, these uh, two leaflets are available from our website. So if you visit um, our website at, on IKO, then you will be able to download these uh, two leaflets if you don't already have them. In addition to these uh, two leaflets, of course, we have provided four more, as uh, Jane mentioned in her opening remarks, and um, I will uh, show you a little bit later the first one and also uh, which ones we're going to be using for this particular training. So in terms of uh, the implementation of uh, the CCR, what uh, the approach that we have taken for uh, the CCR is to implement it as an online fr user-friendly web application that it is supported by a database and it is hosted using cloud services. One of the key features of the CCR is that each state has one account to it. However, access to this account can be given to a number of different users. These users, however, they must be nominated by the state. So Corsia Focal Points, for example, we will have access to the, um, to the account, the CCR account of the state. One person will have access only to one state account. The, for the CCR to work and make sure that the, there is no problems with um, uh, confidentiality of information or having access to other people's accounts, it has a, a number of uh, safeguards built in it to make sure that uh, only uh, one user can see one state's account. In terms of uh, security, to get access to the CCR, you need to set up a password and your password is authenticated by a number of uh, security protocols which are running in the background. Um, this is again was done in order to protect confidential data that may be entered into the, into the CCR. In terms of uploading information, the CCR gives you a number of different options on how to do that and we will show you uh, all those options later in uh, this online training. But uh, very briefly, this can be done through either predefined web forms or it can be done uh, by using uh, files like comma separated value files and you can do manual update, uh, entry of the information like one by one or do through um, using a CSV file to do more than one um, entries at the same time. In terms of uh, traceability and uh, data integrity, every single action that the users take in the context of the CCR is recorded. It is timestamped and is archived. So all the users of the CCR, of a specific account, they know when a specific user took an action. Uh, and we'll show you as well how this works in the CCR and we'll show you how uh, you can, you know, track the information um, in how as the CCR grows and the information that you, you are putting into the system grows. This is an extremely important feature, especially because it is important for all the state users to have a good understanding of um, the changes made over time. So if you need to trace back 
and um, you know reverse some of the actions at least you know who initiated the actions so you can contact the person and you can get a better understanding of why the changes were made also another thing to keep in mind is that once you have submitted information to ICAO using uh, the CCR if you want to make changes to this information you can do that however the previous version of the submission is not deleted, is not overwritten. It is archived and is being kept in the system for future reference. And again, this is another functionality to make sure that we can trace data back and have a complete record of all the actions that have been taken over time. In relation to who can use uh, the CCR, there are three main user groups or roles uh, within the CCR, and these are shown on the slides. We have, first of all, the Corsia focal points. We have a second group, which is called state user, and a third group, ICAO super user. Now, the Corsia focal points in the context of the CCR is the person that has been nominated uh, by his or her respective state, and uh, the CFP for the CCR can upload and change the data which are specific to his or her state, and also has the responsibility of approving and submitting the information and data to ICAO. A state user is a new group. It's a new group of users, and uh, what I would like to point out before I explain what a state user does or does not do, is that there is no requirement for a state user in the CCR. For any specific state, a Corsia focal point is more than enough to do the work in terms of how the information flows. However, if states have the luxury to have more than one person working on the Corsia, then there is a possibility of identifying individuals as state users to assist the work of the Corsia focal point in uploading information and making information uh, and changing information in the CCR. Again, I would like to repeat this. The CCR can work with a Corsia focal point, uh, but, it, but it doesn't need the state user. The state user is an option given to the states if they have more people involved in the CCR to involve them with the update of the information within the system. The ICAO super user is ICAO staff responsible for the management of, um, of, of the CCR and also of the information and all the data submitted to ICAO. And the ICAO super user checks all the submissions from states and prepares the ICAO Corsia documents. In relation to how information is stored in the CCR, I mentioned in the beginning of uh, my presentation that uh, this is a web application supported by a database. So for those of you that are familiar with uh, databases, they work with having um, specific records. So this is the same approach we have taken for the CCR, uh, where we call the CCR records uh, year records. And each year record is associated with a specific state, a specific reporting year, and a specific reporting area. And uh, by reporting area, I mean the five areas for which states have to provide information. And I saw them in a table earlier in my presentation, airplane operators, verification bodies, CO2 emissions, and so on and so forth. So for an example, if you see a record within the CCR, which um, has the name Canada 2019 airplane operators, I think it is obvious what this means. This particular year record contains information and data for all aeroplane operators attributed to Canada for the year 2019. That's um, a very standard way of uh, how the databases work, so nothing complicated about this. It's just, um, you know, we found this way to um, make sure that we can track information into the CCR. Now, if you, um, you know, visualize this year record, you can think of them as a filing cabinet. So you can you know, buy a filing cabinet for your office where you can store information and you can, um, you know, you can um, actually categorize information in different, in different groups. 
So it's exactly the same way. So the thing of, you know, the filing cabinets as uh, your account, and then within its filing cabinet, you have different drawers. So in each one of these drawers, basically you store information for a specific year and for a specific reporting area. So for the reporting year 2019, uh, your drawer will have information on airplane operators, a second one will have information on verification bodies, a third one on CO2 emissions. The same applies for 2020. And the same applies to you know, the first three years of uh, the pilot phase. In addition for the pilot phase, you have the option to provide information on uh, Corsia eligible fuels claimed for its a specific year. And once the pilot phase has finished and you also have information on the cancelled emission units, there is another draw for you there to provide information on all those cancellations of emission units. So this is um, in a very simplistic way of uh, how an account uh, of, of how a CCR account of a specific state is structured. And of course, what I'm showing on the screen is from 2019 to 2023. But of course, our filing cabinet is, is much longer, is much bigger and goes all the way to 2035. So if you open one of these drawers, then what you end up with is uh, information which is stored in them and is stored in specific entries. So these two examples that you see on your screen, uh, the one is on the aeroplane operators and the other one is on CO2 emissions. There are specific entries within each one of uh, the drawers and each one of these entries is associated with a different parameter. So for example, for aeroplane operators, one entry will be specific for an aeroplane operator of the state. And then within this entry, there will be information on the name of the operator, the attribution method, the address, the contact person, and so on and so forth. And in the case where you have more than one aeroplane operators, uh, each individual operator will have its own entry within uh, the 2019 airplane operators year record. Now, if you open the draw with the CO2 emissions, the entries are different. There you have entries which are associated with specific state pairs. So the information is again a different compared to the airplane operators because for a state pair, you need information on the departing state, the arrival state, the amount of CO2 emissions, whether this information is confidential, you know, things like that. So this is how information is uh, stored and how information is being uh, manipulated, if you like, within uh, the system in year records and entries. Now, another important feature of the CCR is what we call the status of a year record. And the status of a year record reflects what kind of action can be taken on a specific year record. So I'm gonna walk you through this, uh, this particular slide, but before I do that, this is a very important one for you to understand because this is uh, one of the key parts of the CCR and how information changes. For, a, for each and every specific reporting area, you're gonna have one year record for one year and this is going to progress into your, uh, into your CCR account until it reaches ICAO. And the progression is done through uh, the status of the year record. So when the first time that you create a new year record, automatically the CCR identifies this as in progress. And a year record, which is identified as in progress, can be modified, can be edited, can information in the year record can be deleted for specific entries by the Corsia focal point and the state user. So when you have a year record and its status is in progress, you can do a lot of changes in it. You can delete. So for example, if you had a year record for airplane operators, you can uh, delete airplane operators, you can add airplane operators, Within a specific operator, you can change the information, the address, you can do a number of different things. Once 
all of the editing, the adding, the deleting is being completed, then what you do is you change the status of the record to complete. And this can be done either by a Corsia focal point or a state user. Now, when this is done, then the only person who can make changes to this year record is the Corsia focal point. So a year record with a status complete is a year record which is basically under review by the Corsia focal point, and the Corsia focal point can make changes to this year record uh, if he or she uh, so wishes. Once the review of, uh, the, of the record has been completed, then the Corsia focal point can submit the year record to ICAO by changing the status of the year record to ready. Once this is done, then the Corsia focal point cannot make any changes to this particular year record anymore. So a year record with its status identified as ready will be reviewed by the uh, IKO super user and uh, the super user will identify if there are any mistakes in it, if there is any format problems with it. And if everything is okay, and I will explain a bit more about, you know, the different checks that have been done to the specific year records. Um, and after all the checks have been made, have been completed, the IKO super user will lock this particular year record by changing the status from ready to locked. And again, this record cannot be changed by the Corsia focal point. While we were developing the CCR, we uh, realized that we are all humans, uh, we are not computers, uh, and we all make mistakes. So the CCR uh, has an additional functionality where if the Corsia focal point identifies an error in the submission that was uh, in, in the submission of the year record, then it, the Corsia focal point can request the IKEO super user to either release a record that has been that has been identified as ready for further editing, or even a locked record can be unlocked for further editing. And this can be done through what we call a service request. And this can only be requested by the Corsia focal point of a state. We hope that this will not happen a lot, but again, the system provides for this kind of situations uh, where by mistake information was, um, uh, was um, wrongly inserted into the, into the CCR. One of the things to keep in mind is that in accordance with Annex 16, Volume 4, if the information, if wrong information, incorrect information was submitted to ICAO and the information was used by ICAO to make a number of calculations, including the calculation of the sector's growth factor um, in relation to the calculation of uh, the total emissions uh, for a specific year, then all of those changes that may be made to a locked record or to a ready record will not be taken into account into any reviewing the total CO2 emissions or, or revising the sector's growth factor. But this information will be kept into the system for a future reference. So this is again another very important slide and, and a very important aspect of um, you know how the system works. But you know try now to come into some you know graphical information and uh, how the reporting process works in the CCR. Um, during the design and the development of the tool, basically what we, what we went for was a simple reporting process with simple steps. So the first thing that you have to do when you log into the system and you want to report on a specific area is to actually select the reporting area. And by reporting areas, we, again, we refer to the aeroplane operators, verification bodies, CO2 emissions, eligible fuels, and canceled emission units. These are the five key reporting areas of the CCR. So first of all, you select your reporting area, 
And then you say, and you decide, is there a year record available for a specific? If the answer is no, then you have to create a year record. And as I mentioned earlier, the, 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 the default status of a new year record is in progress. After, after the year record has been created, then you can select it and you can start adding and editing information and data. When this is complete, then you change the status into complete, and then the Corsia focal point will check the information, review the information, and when the information is again um, identified as you know 100% correct, then this information can be submitted to ICAO by changing the status of a year record to ready. Then the final step is for ICAO to change the status to locked and publish IKO Corsia documents. So this is a very simple reporting process, um, you know, very simple steps that have to be followed. There is a bit more details behind this, and um, I'm gonna show you um, how it works um, in, in, in the following slide, not, not in this one, on the table. In the following slide, I'm just gonna walk you through in a bit more detail on how these things could be done. Uh, this provides you just a quick summary of the different permissions that different user groups have within the CCR. So in terms of uh, creating uh, year records, um, it is the Corsia Focal Points and the IKEO Super User that have this functionality. All three user groups, Corsia Focal Points, State User, Super User, uh, can add, edit, delete um, information in, in the system. Only the Corsia focal point can submit information to ICAO. The state user cannot do that. And the same way the state user cannot create a year record, as you can see on, uh, on your screen. And the only user that can actually publish ICAO, ICAO Corsia documents is the ICAO uh, super user. So given you all this information, let us, let me walk you through you know, how the data flow process works in, in the CCR. And again, for these slides, we assume that you have a Corsia focal point in a state and you also have a state user. As I mentioned before, the system is, you know, can work 100% with only the Corsia focal point. And we understand that in a lot of states, you know, there will be only one person, you know, responsible for, uh, for all of this. Uh, but what we show you here, it works, you know, for both the Corsia Focal Point and the state user. Uh, but again, it can work with the Corsia Focal Point as well, um, you know, by just one person. So the starting point of the whole process is to create a year record. We saw that is a responsibility of the Corsia Focal Point to do that. The moment that the record is created, its status set to in progress. And this is when both the Corsia focal point and the state user can start add and edit information in the year record. Once this stage is complete, then for example, the state user contains the status of the year record to complete. When this is done, then an automated email notification is sent to the Corsia focal point, notifying the Corsia focal point that your state user has changed the status to complete. So now please review the information. So the Corsia focal point reviews the information and data, and the Corsia focal point has the option of making changes in the year record at this point in time. If you remember from my earlier presentation, a complete record can be are manipulated by the Corsia focal point, can be information can be added, can be edited. You have a lot of flexibility, you can do a lot of things there. However, if there are revisions that need to be made, and those revisions need to be made by the state user, then the Corsia focal point can change the status of the year record back to in progress. And when this is done, another automated email notification is sent to the state user informing that there's been a change in the status of the year records and there is need for more information to be provided in the particular year record. 
And again, the, uh, the data flow continues the same way, going back to completes and back to the Corsia focal point. However, if the Corsia focal point says, did that mean that there are no revisions needed? So this information now is ready to be submitted to ICAO. The moment that this is realized, then the status of the year record can be changed to ready. And again, another automatic email notification is sent to the ICAO super user that the year record has been submitted and now it is ready to be checked for format correctness. So the ICAO super user checks the record and if any errors, and then there has to be a determination whether any errors. Um, at this point, I just want to highlight that this checking for format correctness is not a validation of data. ICAO does not have the authority, does not have the mandate to do any validation of the information. It is only whether the information has been provided to us in uh, the correct format. So if some problems have been found, then the ICAO super user can change the status back to in progress and another email notification will be sent to the Corsia focal point informing that there are some problems with the submission and they have to be fixed. So again, you know, if this is done, then the process starts again with the Corsia focal point and the state user providing information and then going back into all of uh, this, what we saw earlier. However, if there are no errors, no problems have been found with the year record, then the ICAO super user changes the status to locked, and then the information can be used to publish ICAO Corsia documents. So basically, this slide tries to summarize the different roles and responsibilities of uh, the different groups of users, and also the key steps in terms of how information flows um, between the different users of the CCR in a specific CCR account. And again, as I mentioned, the top layer, the state user that you see here is optional. If a state has the luxury to have more than one person working on the CCR, they can identify a state users. But if there are no other person, there's only one person, then the Corsia focal point can uh, walk through all this process. And of course, if it is only one person, the Corsia focal point, um, the whole process is a lot simpler as uh, you can as you can realize. So this is um, the end of my presentation. Just you know, some things to uh, keep in mind. Um, it's Corsia focal point and state user is connected to only one IKEO state uh, CCR account, and therefore the Corsia focal point and the state user does not have access to information and data of any other ICAO state. There is a provision in uh, the uh, CCR, in, uh, sorry, in the Annex 16 Volume 4, according to which if an ICAO state does not provide its annual aggregated emission report to ICAO, then ICAO can fill the gaps by using other information available to it. And when this is done, uh, the IKO will upload information. If we don't receive information in accordance with the timeline that it is um, inscribed into the Annex 16 Volume 4 in Appendix 1, then IKO will use alternative sources of information to um, fill the gaps of uh, CO2 emissions. And when we do that, the information in the CCR, what you will see there as a year record, the status of this year record will be set to ready ICAO data to signify that this information coming from uh, based on ICAO uh, data that it is available to it. Again, the status of the year record changes and the changes they signify different things in terms of uh, where the year record is in the process of um, uh, submission. So the uh, the year the year records uh, will uh, the status of the year record will go from in progress to complete to ready to locked, and I show you all of those things in on earlier slides. Just one thing to keep in mind: a complete record is read only for the state user. It's only the Corsia focal point that can change 
uh, the status of a, a record from complete to in progress if uh, the state user needs to make further uh, changes. And again, a record which is ready or locked, the status of the record is ready or locked, then it's read only for the Corsia focal point and uh, the state user. If the, um, uh, there is a request from uh, the Corsia focal point or if the IKO super user identifies some problems, then uh, these particular records can be changed back into in progress. The status can be changed back into in progress for further editing. In a summary format, we have provided this information in the leaflet, the CCR specific leaflet, which is um, indicated with a letter A at the top, top right corner. And we send you this uh, together with the invite for this event. The, uh, it is a two pager and uh, summarizes some of the slides that uh, I showed you and also some of the tables. And uh, just for you, you can print this if you want. You can have it on your desk as a reminder of uh, the data flow process and of the responsibilities of the different, of the different users of the CCR. This is the end of uh, this, you know, first introduction to the CCR. Uh, there was one question about uh, how long are the data kept in the CCR? Um, as long as Corsia is around, the information will be stored in the CCR. Uh, there is no time limit. Um, we know that in accordance with the decision we have, uh, the system is going to be uh, with us until 2035. Of course, it is up to uh, the assembly uh, to decide otherwise and extend the life of, um, of Corsia. But for as long as Corsia is about, the information will be there. Oh, there's another question about number of first use allowed. There is no limit again. You can have as many state users as, as you want. Just keep in mind, there is only going to be one Corsia focal point per state. Otherwise, the Corsia focal point can nominate two, three, four, ten uh, state users if, um, uh, if they so desire. Uh, one thing to keep in mind, however, is make sure that you as a Corsia focal point you nominate the right people as state users because a state user will have access to confidential information. So, for example, um, it might be a bit risky if you make um, an airline operator, for example, a state user. Uh, you know, this operator will have access to confidential information and this is not something that um, is recommended uh, for this, um, uh, you know, for, for the CCR. Uh, people that have access to uh, to a CCR's account, uh, really, they have to understand the risks associated with them. And uh, another thing that we are making, we're going to make available before any one of you gets access to the CCR, is a set of user agreements. Uh, and this uh, user agreement, sorry, and this agreement has a number of terms in it that have to be accepted before getting access to the CCR. And this is, again, to make sure that uh, information is protected as it should be. Uh, there's another question about, can you please elaborate the Corsia annual sector growth factor which can be submitted in 2022? This is not a submission. Uh, states do not have to submit anything specific on the uh, sector's growth factor. I think that ICAO will calculate taking into account all the CO2 emissions from all uh, states for a specific year. So once we have, um, you know, in 2022, for example, states will provide to us information for the year 2021, for the previous year. What IKEA will do is we'll collect all this information and then we will compare uh, the total emissions to the baseline uh, emissions. And this will be basically the the basis for determining the sector's growth factor. This is described in the Annex 16, uh, Volume uh, 4, and uh, this is going to be worked that is going to be done uh, by the IKO Secretariat. There's another question about request to the IKO super user to change record status from complete to in progress. Okay. Um, no, the request 
uh, to the IKO super user is uh, related to a, a status which is either ready or locked. The, uh, the Corsia focal point has the option to change from complete to in progress. You don't have to go through the IKO super user for that. Uh, you can do that if you feel that your state user has to add some more information. Then you can do this as a Corsia focal point. You're going to have this functionality to yourself. You don't have to ask IKO for that. It's only for the um, for the other two statuses, ready and locked. And we'll show you how this is done uh, at the end of the second segment. Yes, on the question about whether IKO has to be notified if a state user has been nominated, yes. The Corsia focal point needs to send um, an email message to IKEO, and IKEO will use information, basically uh, the email address and the name of the person, and will create an account in the CCR. So we have to be notified, um, but there is no need for any other um, formal um, notification other than email message to CCR at IKEO.int. Uh, um, how will the baseline data for 2020 be treated in regard to COVID-19 impact? This is um, a question which goes beyond the scope of uh, this particular um, training. Uh, just, you know, some um, background information for you to know. Uh, Hero Council is already looking into any possible impacts of uh, COVID-19. So we are all looking forward to uh, more advice uh, from the Council at, uh, you know, once at the um, all the impacts have been assessed, and if there's going to be um, any um, um, any result out of this, which may affect the baselines. At this point in time, uh, there is no such information uh, coming out from the council, so we're all waiting for uh, the wisdom to be conveyed to us. I will um, log into the CCR, and I will also encourage you to do the same. Use your user uh, name and your password that you have already set up and um, just log in into the CCR. And you can do this by um, typing corsia.turanto.com onto your web browser. Uh, one thing to um, keep in mind is that um, this is the training version of the CCR. Once we have the first version, um, you know, the, the web address may be different and all this information will be provided to, to all of you. Another thing that you need to keep in mind, especially because of what we discussed earlier about confidentiality of information, never, ever, ever give out your username and your password. Do not give this information to any other person uh, who may or may not be authorized to use the CCR. If a second individual needs to have access to the CCR as a state user, please let IKEO know, and we will make sure that this person gets access to the CCR account. If also you, um, it comes to your attention that your password has been leaked, you know, somebody else knows your password and they can, your username, and they can enter CCR and they can impersonate you as the Corsia focal point, also, uh, please let us know. Uh, you know, the first thing to do in that case is for you to change your password immediately. And you can change your password at any time by going to CorsiaTurano.com, you know, for, uh, for this particular version. And you can click on Forgot Password. And when you do this, then again, you go through the same process. You provide your email or your username. And then you will be receiving an email message to your registered email account uh, to... Uh, to set up a new password. Um, if for some reason, you know, somebody has access to your email um, and they, uh, you know, can impersonate you in a number of different ways, then also talk to us and we'll try to find another way to make sure that the information in the CCR is, um, is secure. So um, let me log in as in the CCR just to show you how and um, I have created an account for myself as a best user CCR. Um, if once you successfully log in, this is what you will see on your screen. This is your homepage. 
And so the homepage has a number of different parts to it. First of all, you can see your information in this box over here um, in uh, almost the middle of the screen there, which says user information. I uh, will see your, um, your email address and what is your role. The name of your state appears at the top left corner underneath the ICAO logo. So I am logged in as the Corsia focal point for the ICAO state Vanuatu. The same information you can also see by clicking on uh, the right hand corner. There is like an icon there, you know, a person icon. Um, you can see information again about your state, your role. Uh, there you can also have, there's a button where you can change your passwords. Some basic information about the application. This will be populated in the future. And also you can log out from here by clicking on the log out button. Um, you will not see the bottom part that you see here on this pop-up window. This is only specifically for me as an IKO super user, and you will not have access to this. So what you see is up to the gray box, basically. So this is how you take your information um, as a user. If on your screen, you see something different, if you do not see your name, you do not see uh, your email address, then please let us know immediately. Uh, send us an email message to ccr at ikeo.int and we will uh, fix this problem. So uh, this is the first part of um, you know, your screen. The second one is about information on your ICAO state. And uh, there are two options here. You can view information about uh, your state. Um, you will see there is an I icon there. The I icon anywhere in the CCR means you can view information, but you cannot change information. And the same goes for both of them. So if you click on it, you can have a look at this information. So the first thing that you will see over here is uh, um, information about your state. So the name of your state is Vanuatu. So again, if you click on the I icon next to it, what will appear on your screen is um, this, uh, this page of the CCR uh, with uh, different tabs. So your first tab is details. The second one is called CCR user. Third one, Corsia participation, RTK data, ICAO state journal. So the first tab details provides information about your state again. What is the name of your state? Again, this is read only information. You cannot change it. It's under the control of ICAO super user. And also there's another field which is called ICAO state codes. Uh, this is for use at a later point in time. Also at the bottom, you will see, uh, this has not been set for any state right now, uh, but uh, for, for the version one of the CCR, the IKO super user will set uh, these values for each state. And of course you will not be able to change it. This is will be determined in accordance with the UN rules. So this will give an indication of whether a specific state is a small island developing state, a least developed country or a landlocked developing country and which will be set by ICAO, as I mentioned. On the second tab, the CCR user, this is where you will see the list of all users. I mean, right now you don't see anything. I have specific status in the system as a super user, but in your case, you should be seeing your name there. And if there is a state user for your state, you will also see um, you know, the name of the individuals in that place there as well. On the third tab, you can see the Corsia participation a status for your state. Again, for Vanuatu, it is empty. Uh, for now, Vanuatu has not volunteered to participate in the first phase. But if your state has already indicated its intention to participate, then you will see that uh, this has already been reflected in uh, your specific uh, account. The fourth uh, tab is information on RTK data for 2018. This information is for Again, this data is provided for information purposes only and is controlled uh, by ICAO. The last, um, ICAO, uh, the, the last tab is the ICAO State Journal, and this is uh, where you can actually see what has happened to this particular screen over time. And this is where you see um, you know, the different users and what they have uh, changed, what they have added, what they have removed, um, starting from all the, the beginning of, um, um, of when this account was created. 
so let me actually change the size of this, make it to 100, so we can see, have like a complete list of um, all the different people who made changes uh, to this specific page. And this starts all the way to 2019, uh, when we're in the development phase of, um, of the tool, and we made a number of different changes, you know, testing different functionalities of the tool. So this is a complete record of all the things that um, you know have been changed in uh, this specific part of the tool. And this is what I was talking about, the data integrity and uh, data traceability. And this particular function, this journal, appears everywhere on all the screens that you're gonna see um, in also in the second segment of the tool is there for every single uh, screen of the, of the CCR. So this is the information that you have about your IKEO state. Uh, again, this will be populated, of course, over time in terms of course your participation every year from 2021 onwards, there will be a new entry uh, for all states. And again, this is controlled by IKEO. You don't have to do anything there. Um, also the IKEO users as this changes, of course, you will see changes there over time. If there is another course here focal point, if there is a new state user and so on and so forth. So let's go back to the home page. Um, the, uh, the second, uh, the second again option to have a look at is again the CCR user profile. Uh, for me, it's empty because again, as I said, I have a special status in the system, but you know, in your case, you should be there your name and you can actually, you know, look around, see if the information has been included in there when your account was, uh, was created. So now um, to a bit more, you know, functions of uh, the CCR on uh, the left hand side, you have the main navigation menu. And for um, all of you, you will see the five reporting areas, airplane operators, verification bodies, CO2 emissions, eligible fuels, canceled emission units. Only Corsia focal points will see a sixth option, which is service request. Any state user will not see this. Uh, because this is specific um, functionality for uh, the Corsia focal point. Uh, this menu you can use is visible on all the screens of the CCR and you can use it to navigate back and forth and between different parts of the CCR. If you want to increase uh, the real estate of your screen, you can minimize the, uh, this, uh, uh, you know, this uh, navigation menu. So you can see only the icons on the left hand side and um, you, you can, again, maximize it by clicking on the arrow at the bottom. This navigation menu is also replicated in the bottom part of your screen where we have the, uh, the search, the different search options for the different reporting areas. And um, again, you have, uh, for the Corsia focal points, you have six boxes. For state users, you only have five because there is no service request. Uh, this particular feature of uh, the homepage will become useful over time uh, because, you know, as you start populating the, um, uh, the CCR, you will have a lot of different year records and you can use this bottom part to look for specific year records in your, uh, in your CCR account. For now, it is empty and uh, being completely empty, this is indicated by what you see here as the numbers in, uh, in a red frame. Uh, the white number, which is zero for all of them. This tells you that there is no year record for any of those reporting areas, for the five reporting areas, and there has been no service request made. Once you start creating year records, this will change automatically and it will be reflected. We'll see this um, later today uh, when we do the demonstration in the second segment. The other thing that I would like to highlight to you is that you have the option to create uh, shortcuts and this is done through my favorites. You will notice as you go through the different screens of, um, of the CCR that uh, there is a star that appears in, um, in all of them. And uh, if you have any favorites, if you visit a specific uh, page very often and you don't want to click three or four times to get there, if it is, you know, a complicated one, then what you can do is you can create a, a shortcut and you can include it here under my favorites. And let me show you how this is done. So let's assume, you know, we are in the um, IKEO state. 
we are in Vanuatu, so we are in the course of participation. Let's say this is one of your favorites and you want to have quick access to it. So instead of clicking three times, you just have like a shortcut. To do that, you can, on this particular page, you can click on the star that you see there at the top. And when you do that, you have to provide a name. So you can say my Corsia participation, or whatever makes sense for you, whatever you want to add there, and save. Now, once you have done this, if you go back to your home page, then you can see it there as, um, as a shortcut. So if you remember, before having the shortcut, I had to click three times to get there. Now, by clicking once, I am there already. So this is, you know, a cool feature of, um, of the tool and you can use it if you have, you know, these kind of situations where you have, want to have quick access to a specific page and you can have as many my favorites as you want. I just would like to highlight, be careful how you do that because you may end up with a long list and then it may not be very useful to you if you have to scroll down or you make this box, you know, too big for you to handle. And of course, you can always remove uh, this particular shortcut by just clicking on the bin, um, you know, icon next to it. So by doing that, it's gone. The last part that I would like to highlight from, uh, from this page is uh, an inbuilt help that we have in the CCR. We have developed a help menu. So, uh, and this can be accessed by wherever you see the question mark. So from the home page, if you click on the question mark, then this pop-up appears that has a complete list of all the help items that we have um, put into the CCR. So let's say you want some help on how to report airplane operators. Then, you know, you click there and you go into this page where it gives you some uh, very basic information, background information, and then also gives you information on how to report on airplane operators. Uh, this, the help also gives you information about the various properties. And by properties, we mean uh, the different data statuses and, you know, what is the sequence of uh, the different data statuses and a bit more information on that. Also, some specific actions about the release of the data or locking of the data. Again, this doesn't apply to every single aspect, but, you know, wherever this information is available, it has been included. You can go back into the main, um, into the main, um, in, into the main page, the home page, by clicking on uh, the home button underneath, and you can look at the you know, report CO two emissions or you know something different. You you have help associated with um, a lot of different parameters. Now, what um, the developers have done is that you can access this help even from inside specific parts. So if you were, for example, let's look at you know, the report CO2 emissions that you're gonna see later on in this, um, in this online training. If you click the question mark from within the report CO2 emissions, the same pop-up will open, but this time it takes you automatically to the reporting of CO2 emissions. So you don't have to do the selection twice. So there you go automatically. But if you want to go back to the main, uh, to the home, um, to the home page of the help, then you can do that by clicking the home button at the bottom of your, of your pop-up. So this is another, you know, cool feature that you have uh, uh, built-in help. Of course, the ICAO Secretariat is here to help you. Anything that you need from us, uh, we are here to help and we'll provide assistance to all of you, all Corsia Focal Points, um, um, over time uh, with it for the use of, um, of the CCR. Um, this is uh, what I wanted to uh, highlight in terms of um, the homepage and the main features of uh, the tool. Uh, we are close to the break. Uh, it's, um, um, it's already 4.30. So um, I will just stop here and see if there are any questions on, on this part. Uh, there is another question about whether the STU can be a person from an airline. Um, again, as I mentioned earlier, you have to be very careful when you give access to um, in uh, access to the CCR to airlines. Um, this is not it is not designed to be given to airlines. This is for Corsia focal points. 
and other people working for the authority that they have um, responsibility um, to upload information into the CCR. So especially if you have two airlines, it's even more dangerous uh, to give access because they will have access to potential confidential information. So my advice on that is to not give access um, to the airlines. Um, make sure that access is given to other maybe colleagues from the administration that can help you with uploading information to avoid any accidental release of uh, confidential uh, information. Was another question about which kinds of information will be provided by mail regarding the nomination of SDU. The information we need to create an account is the name of the person and the email address which will be used for communication. Uh, there is no need for any other information. Um, there was a question about the possibility to print the information given in the help. Um, in uh, the help, um, let me see if I, that's, that's a very interesting question. I don't have the answer from the top of my head, but um, let me see if there is an option. No, I don't see the option here. Uh, no, the, the quick answer is uh, no, probably you cannot. I can go back to our developers, see if um, you know this is something that the tool can do. From uh, a first look, you cannot do it. But also what we are going to do is we're going to provide you with a user manual that will have a lot of information uh, right now. Uh, I think in the draft version that we have that we are still working on is close to uh, 100 pages. <laughs> Um, which has a lot of tips, has a lot of guidance, a lot of um, information on how to do things. So you'll be able to download this from within um, the system. And also we have provided you with the leaflets that we hope that they give you a bird's eye view and some basic information uh, about, about the tool. But we'll get back to you if it is possible to print uh, the help from, um, from within the system. There was another question about in the past we already got by email a password to access CCR. Right, uh, it was that the, the, the password that you received was not for the CCR per se, it was for the online spreadsheet which was um, a predecessor to the CCR and it only had the functionality to report information on airplane operators and verification bodies. That online spreadsheet will not function once the CCR comes live. So that passwords and everything will not be valid anymore. You're gonna to have to create, we will not provide any passwords this time around for the CCR. You will be responsible for setting up your own passwords. And I showed how you can do this and you can change your own password. So you will have complete access of that part um, of uh, getting access to the CCR. Okay, uh, well, if there are no other questions on, um, on this, I think that's a good time to stop. There will be, of course, more time in the second segment if you have some follow-up questions. And if you have questions after the session, do not hesitate. Please send them to us by email and we'll be more than happy to answer them. So with that, I will uh, stop here. Uh, we'll be back at uh, 4.45 uh, to continue with the segment two. Thank you very much.